did you ever watch paint dry? We're waiting for our coffee. Coffee to perk. Yep. Hey, I'll bet you'll never guess where we're at. How long does it take you to decide where you want to go and go? We'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. After we, coffee. After coffee. <laughs> it's hot. A lot hotter than the air is right now. It's a pretty nice morning. Anyway, getting back to how long does it take you to get ready to go someplace, to even make up your mind where you wanted to go. Thursday at about 4 o'clock, Diane comes into my train room and says, Hey, isn't this the weekend of that reenactment at Fort Sisseton in South Dakota? What do you think about going out to Fort Sisseton? And I immediately thought, wow, you know, Fort Sisseton? She's been wanting me to bring me out to Fort Sisseton for 18 years. Yeah, I was out here about 20 years ago. And, and then after, you know, we... Uh, dated and got married you know it's just I always talked about it and I just told him that he'd really like it out here and we know some people you know that are going to be dressed in wool out there <laughs> uh, you know going back to Civil War reenacting and living history but I just don't feel like you know wooling up but, but she says you want to go out and watch it and I said well it's kind of late to try and get a reservation you know at the state park there but I had already been looking online about 10 minutes prior and saw that there were three spots, three camp spots still open. So she was looking already. <laughs> Before she even brought it to me, she knew what she wanted to do. So I said, yeah, let's do it. So here we are. So I'll show you our camp, just a little bit of our camp and a little bit of the park. And then uh, after breakfast, we'll show you this fort. It's, yeah. Uh, so we're in Fort Sisseton, and Fort Sisseton is in the state park in South Dakota. So that's where we're camped. So we'll catch you after breakfast. So you'll notice that box our site has electric. So I decided I would bring my electric cord and a fan. And uh, hey, it worked out great. We put that fan in there. And uh, last night, though, it did get down into the low 60s. And um, I, I closed up the back of the truck, but we had the fan on. And wow, it was just perfect all night long in there. So I'm glad I brought that fan. On a real hot night, it'd be too, too hot in there. And then the sides do open up, but then you'd be open to the bug. So that worked out great. So I'll show you just a couple of clips of uh, the state park, the area for camping. This is the one area that we're in. There's probably about, oh, eight or ten sites here. It's not, not real big. And you can see just about everybody's got a trailer or a fifth wheel or something. Uh, pretty fancy units. And then uh, there's some cabins that are back there. Uh, I don't know if you can see them. I'll show you a little later. And then over here is that block house you can see back there that's part of the fort. And this truck here looks like a bunch of hobos. I don't know, they just don't fit right in, but it works. And this is probably, you know, the back in there is a, by those trees back in there is a picnic area. And then it looks like, I don't know, private property or something or a farm or something on the other side of those bushes. So this is, uh, this is the state park. And I'll, I'll give you another angle. So that's that uh, block house, you know, that uh, you saw in, in the video here, just for reference. And then back over there, I think there's about another dozen campsites. Uh, some of them are for the volunteers that volunteer here and, and others for, for, you know, campers. You can see a few tents back in there. And then, there's, uh, looks like an arena or something back in there with, uh, with, with, uh, with, with some bleachers and that's a, 
you know, in a, a modern outhouse and some cabins. There's four of them here. And this is where we are in reference to all of that. And there are some trees here, but we got stuck out in the prairie. There's no trees where we are, so the fly really... Now, right over there on the end of this barn, right there, is a way to get into some very modern bathrooms, and there's even showers in there. I'm not going to bring you into a bathroom, but you'll have to take my word that they're one of the cleanest bathrooms I've ever seen. Got it. Got it. All right. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Well, wouldn't you know it, we needed ice. So if you go out the entrance, you came into this park, and you hang a right, and you go down to the first stop sign, take a left, it brings you into a little town called Eden, and there's a little general store down there on the other end of town that's uh, on the right. And uh, gotta say, the ice was reasonable. Check out this, this is a berm that runs around the whole fort. And they dug out a ditch, it's like a moat. There's another one on this side. And there's a lake on the other side of the road over there. And there's one way back beyond the hill over there. So that block house you see kind of defends these two other sides. So you'd have to go down through that ditch and climb up over this berm. But now if you were a soldier, you could fire, you could fire over the top of this berm. That's kind of We're going to go into the visitor center now, see what we can find in there. This is kind of cool, they're talking about their flag. This is pretty neat. flag has 40 stars and used to fly over this fort. I think that's awesome. Check that out, eh? It's one huge flag, eh? Hey? That's the visitor center that we're in now. Yeah. More about the flag. Here's some, here's some artifacts that they found around the fort. There's some doll heads. There you go. I just love that kind of stuff.
Coming.
Marshal will be convened at 3 o'clock in front of the officer's quarters for the trials of Private Martin, Private Lathe, Private Martin. Charge first. Drunken disorderly. Specification of the charge. In that, on the night of the 29th of July, 1865, Private James Martin of Company F, 1st United States Volunteers, did present himself on the parade ground co contrary to the direct order. For example, Private Wagner, Private Hall. What did you witness when you were called to the parade? We witnessed him at, uh, requested assistance to apprehend two gentlemen off the parade ground, and two more were running. Would you like to uh, amend your testimony? You apprehended two gentlemen? They seem not to meet them. <laughs> Let's be clear, Private Wyatt. Did you apprehend two gentlemen or two soldiers? Two soldiers. Fort Sisseton, Wadsworth, 1864. The Fort Wadsworth, his Sox Center, 1864. Sox Center is right next to St. Cloud, Minnesota. And then this one here goes up to Sibley. Um, Sibley, 1863. Sibley, 1863, all the way down there. Here's one here. Fort Wadsworth. Fort to Abercrombie. Okay, Fort Wadsworth to Fort Abercrombie. Way up there, and that's towards the North Dakota Minnesota border. That's all smoke, folks. So we saw this sign of interest, so we pulled into this wayside. This actually runs out into a lake here, whatever this is. And um, I'll show you this other sign in a minute. It's the Continental Divide. And uh, I know there's a, a place in Wisconsin where the Fox River actually stops running south and runs north and I thought that was pretty cool I'm not sure the exact spot of course so I thought maybe if I was just videoing this lake I would see it split but nothing happened okay this is pretty cool eh? the continental divide yeah Browns Valley, that's where we're at. That's where this Continental Divide is. I just thought we'd stop and show you. That's a point of interest. Well, I don't know. There might be something to this. This, this section here, these ripples are coming south. And if I go out there, I don't know. I think, I think the ripples could be going a different direction. So, you know, like this is, this is right there. That's the area, this sign. So I think they'd have this sign pretty close. Smile. Smile. Smile and I know you love me. <laughs> oh, you think so?